My name is Wen Huang, and the title of my book is A Death in the Lucky Holiday Hotel, Murder, Money, and the Epic Power Struggle in China. This book is actually offers the most comprehensive account of the biggest scandal in 2012. As most people know, it was the, the Bo Xilai scandal, uh, the murder of Neil Haywood, uh, a British businessman by the wife of a Chinese senior leader. The death of Neil Haywood triggered the biggest uh, political scandal, one of the biggest political scandals in chi contemporary Chinese history. And what uh, prompted me to write the book was because uh, when the scandal broke out uh, in early 12 2012, there was so much media coverage, and for the first time, the international media uh, get to the issue they covered uh, covered skid by skid. And I realized that uh, there was so much misconception, and then there was a lot of the um, the wrong assumptions about uh, the Chinese political system. This political scandal tells us uh, three things. The first thing is it tells you that China right now. They are not bound by ideological differences, but more by interests and political groups. The Politburo Standing Committee, which is the highest decision-making body, it is uh, a combination of the representatives from different interest groups. So you have to take China. When you look at China, you have to think from the practical point of view. For every measure introduced in China, you have to say which interest groups this is going to benefit. This is the first thing. The second thing is from this uh, scandal, we can see how corrupt within the, the political system is, you know, because the Bo Xilai, we didn't know he was such a uh, well-known anti-crime hero, he and his police chief. And then after the scandal broke, and then we realized that they took bribes, they had the womanizing uh, 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 activities, and then they uh, used the anti-crime campaign to persecute political opponents. And the third part of uh, uh, this book we want to tell is that when the Westerners, when they talk about China, you have to be very practical because people think that the head of the new leadership, like uh, Xi Jinping, the head of the Chinese Communist Party, he is uh, leading this big nation. He doesn't have to go through election. He has unlimited power. In the old times, in the, during China's Cultural Revolution, when Mao Zedong, or in the, even in the post-Mao era, when Deng Xiaoping was in power. It was the power politics. One person, they are, have such personal charisma and power, they can make decisions single-handedly. But now, that era is gone forever, and every decision, like since uh, President Hu Jintao and now President Xi Jinping, is, is a compromise. This is the first time that international media has played a critical role in this scandal, because prior to that, people who know about China will remember that it was so hard to get into to cover a scandal like that in the in the 1980s and 70s. And this is the first time because uh, of the internet and has made it easier for people to disseminate information. And also because of the internet, the Chinese public, they're able to break the firewall, and then they are able to read what is covered in New York Times, because, uh, or the other Wall Street Journal, or the Daily Telegraph, all these Western newspapers. And the political insiders, they realize the credibility of the Western media. So they have deliberately leaked information to the Western media. In this way, the public, the Western Westerners and the Chinese public, they were able to read about the reports from this Western coverage or from the social, from media, from blogs or Twitters. So this is a kind of very refreshing. But on the other hand, we also need to take note of the fact that uh, political insiders, they realize the power of the Western media. They sometimes deliberately disseminate misinformation to uh, uh, jeopardize or to smear their political opponents. Some of the information we have received sometimes can be a mixture of uh, truth and rumor, and we took painstaking efforts to, to verify the information. But the one critical role of the Western media we have not missed is, I think, is very encouraging, is that uh, Western media, for the first time, they are playing a role in promoting freedom of information in China and also in promoting domestic political reforms in China. For example, the New York Times carried that big article about the Chinese premier 
the corruption scandal. And it actually prompts the Chinese government right now to take some measures. For example, uh, a lot of people urge senior officials to uh, to publicize their, their, their own personal assets, the properties. It, this is all because the report from the Western media. And uh, so this is very encouraging.